We've often been overwhelmed by the generosity of Countdown viewers. While this year was no different, it took multiple forms. From your response to a family's home burning to the ground, to the shocking revelation that the state of Arizona was running something that looked very much like an actual death panel. Then there's the truly magnificent work of free health clinics around the country, literally funded by Countdown viewers. First, what might easily be called the fire of the year, the home of Jean and Paulette Cranick, burning as firefighters watched because the Cranicks had failed to pay their $75 subscription fee. The problem, a fee-for-service, pay-to-spray system of Obi County in Tennessee. The hands-off, recklessly minimal approach represents the very worst deconstruction of basic governmental services. But after several appearances on Countdown, the Cranicks agreed to allow Countdown viewers to help. And you did, giving more than $15,000 to help them rebuild their lives. Gene Cranick now telling us, quote, everyone is doing okay. Now to the effort that has become a signature countdown project, the constant and continuing good work of the National Association of Free Clinics, including those special free clinic events serving thousands of people in need. Nearly $3 million has been raised by Countdown and MSNBC viewers to date. This year, you funded two free clinics. The one-day clinic in Hartford, Connecticut, drew 1,000 patients, people without health insurance, many of whom had not seen a doctor for years. 61% of those people were employed, but have no access to health insurance. And in New Orleans, a milestone, the National Association of Free Clinics treated its 10,000th patient in connection with these events. Let's not forget the doctors, nurses, and other volunteers who donate their time and considerable skill to make these clinics such a success. And there is Governor Jan Brewer of Arizona, whose decision to deny organ transplants to nearly 100 citizens amounted to a GOP death panel. Countdown's focus on this has helped the National Transplant Assistance Fund raise more than $150,000. You can still donate to this fund at ntafund.org as we continue to feature the very real people at risk. Can you explain with this platform available to you, Randy, uh, explain to Governor Brewer why it's so important to fix this and not to wait till January when some of the legislators want to bring it up again? Well, it, it would be great if if, uh, if that was the case, if, if somebody could uh, sign something, do whatever, so that it so that the funding would be there for uh, for me to get my heart. Um, if, if it does, as I understand it, that the state's out of money, I understand that, and, and I'm, I'm not looking for, for uh, somebody to invent money for me or, or money where there's not available. Um, but I would love to see if uh, some of the wasted money out there in, in government, I mean, you see it every day. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see some of that redirected into, into a program like this. The, uh, the governor still insists that transplants, even lung transplants like the one that you have been denied, are optional. What do you say to that, especially her word, or you say that word <laughs> optional? It can't be optional. It's not like going to Dairy Queen or something. <laughs> I think I'll take this. I'll take, uh, uh this is life to death. Optional. If you need it to save your life, you got to have it. We don't know what is going to happen. No. Um, we uh, want to have again another opportunity. Uh, I hope that, uh, I know that this is national uh, news and, and I hope that uh, somebody, uh, we hope that uh, somebody's gonna sign another letter for my husband. Uh, so they put you on this list in April and then in August you get this letter from the access people, the, the local Medicaid telling you that you would no longer be covered. Can you give us some sense of what that letter f felt like to receive? Yeah, I, I got the letter. It was an uh, incorrect of letter that we got. They said they weren't going to cover my liver transplant, which um, which mm. would be great. I'm, I'm not asking for a liver transplant, mm. but um, it was tough. It was tough because from April to August, I really got to talk to a lot of transplant survivors and a lot of people that just said how amazing they feel after transplant and the life that they get to live after transplant, being able to hike and do all those things. It got me really excited to know that I was gonna be able to get my new lungs and do things that I've never done. And you know, to hear that was absolutely devastating to know that um, I wasn't gonna, I mean, I, I wasn't gonna get it. This year, as we understand it, you've been hospitalized 11 times in a little over 11 months, and they also laid you off from your job. If you do not get that transplant that you quite accurately say you need, what happens? I will die, Keith. 
when I'm sorry, when when you hear that that 50 million dollars of federal money was given to state prisons in Arizona instead of say, you know, 45 million to state prisons and 5 million to organ transplants so people like you don't get knocked off this list. How does that fact make you feel? It hurts me because there's there's people out there, not just me, but other families that need organ transplants, and we're good citizens, we're productive to society, and it's just wrong. 